Um, if you're comfortable turning on your camera, please do, otherwise we will get rolling. Jazz is here. I think that's everyone. Is that everyone? Yeah, should be everyone. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Cloud9 White, congratulations. First ever VCT Game Changers champions. Uh, pretty much a dominant role throughout this tournament. So uh, let's get rolling right away with Brandon. Congratulations, first and foremost. Uh, kind of playing off of the mention of a dominant, you know, tournament. What's the general feeling, you know, when a map ends extremely close after, you know, so many, you know, 13-0s, 13-2s, you know, kind of middle of the road round counts for other teams, you know, kind of like against Moon Raccoons and CLG, there were some really close maps. Are there any adjustments at all that are made in-game when these matches kind of go the distance? Uh, there's there's some adjustments, like, based on what other teams are doing or how they're defaulting that we make to, like, guarantee that we can win around and counter what they're doing. But besides that, we just keep our mental strong and, like, keep going through. And when it's over, we're just happy it's over, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, like, how it feels is, like, um, I mean, we welcome the challenge. We're glad it's, like, a, a closer a game, really. Um, by the end of it, though, like, when it's close, like, 10-10, 11-11, I don't think we really crack under pressure. We close those out. And since we have, like, we had some close games with Moon Raccoons yesterday, like, we know we can close out those really close games. So I don't think it really um, was too much pressure on us or pressure that we felt. Um, a 2-0 is a 2-0 is a 2-0. Is a 2-0. <laughs> I feel like you've said that a few times. <laughs> uh, Emery, you're next. Uh, so actually, my question I wanted to ask was pretty similar to that. And um, I think Dream's answer might kind of be suffice for it. But uh, I'm going to ask, when you guys had that first close map go into overtime with Moon Raccoons back in the upper bracket finals, were you caught by surprise at all that, you know, you they were able to... to force the map to be that close? Uh, they, we definitely thought that the game would not be that close. And it honestly, like thinking back, it's not super surprising. I think Minerkoons is a really good team. And it, it was just unfortunate that like the way things turned out that Lexi had to step in and play Raze on a map she doesn't normally play on because Jazzy's internet had gone out. But I mean, I, I still think that we went into it under the impression that the game wouldn't have been that close. I think we all knew that they were like the going to be the other best team in the tournament. So we were expecting them to be better than other teams, but we definitely weren't expecting to go into overtime. And I definitely wasn't expecting to play raise on a map that I don't play on an agent I don't play. So um, yeah, we weren't expecting it to be that close, but we knew that they were really good. I think one big difference between like the other games in this one is, um, and by other games, I don't even mean just in this tournament. I mean, just generally speaking, other matches we play in the qualifiers is that um, we like getting in our comfort zone and a lot of stuff happened at the beginning and also not having a warm up scrim kind of like threw things off for like the first game. And then we proceeded to like clean things up afterwards. But yeah, just hearing that like Jazzy's internet goes out and then Lexi gets in and then the moment the first round starts, Lexi, uh, Jazzy gets back, not having the warm up scrim, uh, it just kind of gave them a little bit of momentum, but we cleaned things up and we closed it out. Great, let's go to Malik next. Congrats on the win. Uh, you know, it was an amazing display. Now, you guys didn't just win. You guys absolutely dominated throughout this tournament. What does that do for your confidence going into challengers now? Uh, for me personally, I don't think us dominating in this tournament is going to affect my confidence going into VCT at all because I think the teams in VCT are a lot better. So I think it's like just a completely different like ball field of like what we'll be playing against and what we're up against. So I just I think, think it's better. pretty different. Better is a strong word. I'd say that the teams in VCT have been together for a lot longer and they've been screaming for a lot longer. Um, but yeah. It definitely, um, I don't know. I personally feel a little more confident going in, um, knowing that we have this behind us and that this gave us a lot of experience this weekend. I, I personally feel the biggest thing is getting 
uh, tournament reps on the new patch uh, with Astra included is really the biggest thing that that's helpful that gives us some confidence going into VCT. But I mean, we expected to win this tournament without dropping a map. So it's not a giant confidence boost, but getting those reps in and testing these things in matches definitely, uh, definitely does help. Yeah, like 100% agree with what Dream said. And to add on, I think it also helps with like um, just better confidence when having like nerves or when you're playing with there's like a lot of pressure or they're playing with like 30K people watching. I think it definitely has helped us with that in that regard for that level of confidence. But when it comes to like confidence and like our plays and like our aim and mechanics and so on and so forth, it hasn't really affected that much. It, it honestly helps us playing in this more going into like the next tournament because like, we're kind of used to playing teams that we have, like, we understand their tendencies and habits a lot because we scrim them all the time and we know what to expect. So, like, the first round is always, like, the scariest because you have no idea how they're going to play. And they pretty much teams, like, come out of the gate playing pretty unorthodox sometimes. Like, they don't play, like, smarter. They play for more of their own mechanics, right? So they play harder, as in, like, they focus more on just winning their ones, right? A while like I would like to say like you know the higher tier you go people are playing off of each other more often so that honestly like this helps a lot more because we don't get the chance to practice that and of course like on top of like what we've been talking about like having like 30,000 people watching that it like definitely helps so let's go to Danny next hey guys thank you so much for talking with us so my question is kind of more uh, directed at the tournament in general. Um, what do you guys think of this sort of layout uh, of game changers bringing in um, different uh, genders into professional Valorant and kind of being able to lift them up and have a bigger audience and be able to be put out in the esports scene in general? I think it is so good for the scene and it is completely unprecedented. There's been no um, game that I'm aware of that has taken such actionable steps to developing the female scene in their game. I, it doesn't even come close, really. Like the difference, like even if you look at CSGO right now, like the female scene, there's like two signed teams and there's a couple teams that are in the, the IM area. But when you look at Valorant, we're looking at potentially like, I'm not trying to leak, but potentially like six signs teamed in the future. So like that's incredible. And the thing that, is the most important about this is that these tournaments encourage org support and org support means resources for developing this talent resources means like salaries so they, don't, they can play the game eight hours a day as much as their like male counterparts and that also means their teams become like way better because they can just dedicate themselves to the game which means more women talent yeah i think everybody always talks about um the ultimate goal being like uh co-ed teams and this is 100 percent the way to do it it's uh giving like women not only support but exposure for uh, orgs and other teams to pick them up, you know? So this is a really great thing that Riot's doing. Um, one really good example we can point to is Moon Raccoons, where that's a group of players that didn't really have any attention or eyes on them prior to this event. Now they have a huge fan base. They have a bunch of support. Um, Diana on the team, for example, was tweeting that she was getting DMs from people saying that she was inspiring them to try and play harder. So, and that obviously encourages her to keep working. So there's just so many levels that this uh, touches and helps, right? It's not just the, the teams that are already um, having that support, right? It brings so much more support, so many more eyes to these teams and these players. I also had like the pleasure with Moon Raccoons, like their coach currently is like Kevin, which is Lelius or something. I can't exactly remember on what his handle is on Twitter, just because I know him as Kevin, but I've worked with him before a little briefly. And I've worked with Pranoia, who is like the person that was the point of contact for getting them practice and scrims and stuff. Um, and I've worked with both of them early on in the Valorant scene. So seeing those two work with Moon Raccoons when they were announced, I knew that that team wasn't going to be just like some pushover team, whatever. It's actually a team that actually has resources. So to think about, you know, when they get signed, right, when they get signed and they have the support staff and salary on top of that, they're going to be a really strong force. And I can't wait to see that. And to add on to, um, there obviously have been female tournaments in other games. Like CSGO will have like 
really high prize money, uh, prize money female tournaments. But I think the big difference is like how closely Riot is working with like the community. Like they are so closely working with Galerans, which is like a completely organic grassroots like community for women like to have a safe space and like marginalized genders that have like a safe space in the community. And they work so closely with them. And not only are they developing like players, they're developing female talent, like casters, producers, observers. Like it's like such a beautiful thing to see and see that they are really, it's not just like a marketing thing. They are genuinely taking the steps that are needed to progress like female equality in gaming. You love to see it. Let's go to Jess next. Hey everybody, congrats on your win. That's super exciting. Um, I wanted to ask you about the map advantage that you had going into grand finals. Masters didn't have it, game changers did. What do you think about having one versus not having one? Do you think there should be one? Do you think there shouldn't? I just wanna know your thoughts on that. Dream is good for these, not gonna lie. So um, I definitely think that you should have some sort of advantage coming from the upper bracket, right? But the place Valorant is in right now, it's kind of awkward. You either do a, a BO5 with a map advantage, or I mean, you could do like a bracket reset with a BO3, but that is just way too many games in my opinion. What I think would be really beneficial would be once we get more maps and we can have seven maps in the pool um, where teams, there will actually be bands involved in the BO5, letting the higher seed dictate the order those bands happen in, whether they want to be first band or second band on the map so they can get an advantage in the draft rather than a map advantage seems like where we should head down the road. But for right now, I don't really think there's an easy answer that makes sense. Um, I do think that if we had not had a map advantage, it would still have been a 3-0, though. All right, let's go back to Brandon. Hi again. So my question is for Mel directly uh, in regards to agent selection. Um, so I've heard from kind of several players personally that I've spoken to that they don't consider Killjoy really a great offensive agent. Um, you know, on both Icebox and Haven, you kind of prove that to be just their opinion, really, rather than fact. Um, you know, dominating on the attacking side, kind of what are your thoughts on Killjoy as an attacker and how do you approach offense with her? Uh, it definitely varies from map to map. Um, the most general answer I could give is like, the difference between having a Cypher Sentinel and like a Killjoy Sentinel is that you get the most out of her utility on attack. If you were like, if she's with the original group, gets map control and then puts her gadgets in like a really forward position. So you guys can just leave her and then come back whenever you want. Like for Cypher, it's mostly like on Haven, you're throwing a cage to deny info or you're just like, you're kind of just playing back and just playing for the info. But with Killjoy, you kind of play have to, it's play more with the trio and like really take advantage of your utility and like the info that gives you and just having the ability to hold a section of the map after you gain it. I think that's the biggest difference. Okay, uh, this will probably be the last three questions. So Emery, you're next. Um, so if there was one, I guess, uh, uh, show of weakness from you all in this tournament was in those uh, last two matches, um, uh, especially in the closer maps, uh, you all um, gave up quite a few clutches, um, uh, you know, 1v1s, 1v2s, um, things like that. Uh, so is, is that is, is that a cause for concern for you all? And if it is, um, how do you plan on, on, you know, working on it and improving it um, heading into, you know, the next stage of the VCT? I think the way we played um, in this tournament is probably going to be a lot different than how we play um, in our other ones, I think we kind of got like a little sloppy in this one just because um, we didn't really feel like pressure from the other teams. We didn't really like run any of our like in-depth strategies. We kind of just like ran it down a lot of the time and uh, took a lot of like ego peaks, a lot of ego 1v1s just because we weren't really feeling that pressure. Um, but I think that is something that we do like look at and uh, we do try to fix. I know when... Moon Raccoons took us to overtime. That was something that we talked about for a couple hours afterwards, basically uh, making sure that we don't get sloppy even in these types of games, just so that it kind of like carries over to um, our Champions Tour run. So, 
a good way to put it is like we didn't play as disciplined because no one was forcing us to like the teams we were playing weren't really um denying us that ability so i think in other tournaments where we play better players um we definitely play a lot more disciplined and a lot more precise i guess and we also run a lot of like actual strats in this tournament we kind of didn't show a lot of our normal strats that we do in scrims and other tournaments so Mm, I was going to add to that and say, like, um, like, like Annie said, it was like we we're kind of taking some, like, I, I feel like we we're just playing a bit more loose. Like, I, I think, uh, like we mentioned earlier, we weren't expecting when it comes to release, like, take us like too far. Like, we, we obviously knew they were like the other best tournament or best team in the tournament, but we weren't expecting um, them to punish our like mistakes because we were kind of playing a little undisciplined because of the habits we had from playing like the, the weaker teams in the tournament. And I think that it was honestly a super easy fix. It is not like a cause of concern. It was literally just like comms. <laughs> People were just like doing the same thing, but just not calming it. And the only times they won clutches is when we lined up because both players had the play that they wanted to do and they just needed to calm it. It's super simple fix. And mm -hmm. we cleaned that up for today. Okay, Malik. Emery, you must have been in my head because I had a very similar question. Uh, but backing off of uh, talking about the strats, um, are you guys kind of developing your playbook going forward uh, with Astra, especially on Haven? I know you guys showed a, a little bit of that today. Kat, you want to answer this one? Um, yes, I think we're continuing to work with Astra. She's obviously pretty new, um, and there's a lot that goes into her, you know, there's so much you can do on a macro level with Astra and you have to really work with your teammates, which is something that is a little different from Omen. Um, but yeah, we've been um, scrimming with her for a bit and I'm very excited to continue to do so. And um, yeah. I just wanna say that I'm so happy to have a player like Kat that is willing to pick up like a complicated agent like Astra, like the moment they're dropped and just commit to playing that. Because we've heard from, like there's a lot of teams that scrimmed Astra and they just dropped her. They just couldn't. After a week, they're like, nah, like that's that we can't. This, our team is not like made for this. We just don't want to deal with it right now. And Kai is really taking it on for the team. And it has honestly upgraded our play so much. So I just wanted to say that. I love you, Mel. I love you. <laughs> All right. Uh last question goes to Jess. I'm glad I'm last because I just have a fun question for y'all. What are you gonna do tonight to celebrate your win? I'm gonna uh, play some ranked. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch VODs. <laughs> yep. Just probably get drunk, something. Mel, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Me and Mel are gonna be on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, Mel, what are you gonna do, Mel? <laughs> no, y'all trying to expose me. I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna get some boba and I'm gonna watch the VODs back. That's what I'm mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's definitely like what I'm story. doing. I really <laughs> said we had pizza party yesterday, so we can't have pizza party today. Yeah, we all, oh. we all, like, two people, after the match yesterday, two people were individually talking. I forget which two were first, and they both coincidentally were getting pizza. So then, basically, <laughs> all of us just ended up ordering pizza in solidarity so we could have our, our remote pizza COVID pizza party. Yeah. <laughs> It's adorably wholesome. And I have to say, Annie, I kept thinking that there was an old man standing behind you. This I whole asked time. my dad, don't don't worry about him. And then, <laughs> <laughs> then I realized I believe it's Danny DeVito that's behind yeah. you. So no big oh, deal. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, C9 White. Uh, congratulations on being the first ever winners. And we look forward to you kicking ass and taking names in VCT stage two. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Good night, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.